Report, a BHMSD podcast. Welcome to episode two of the 2023-2024 BHMSD Roar Report. I'm excited to join back with you today to share some information about our district. But first and foremost, I want to welcome everyone back to the school year. We started off our school year very well, welcoming back new students and returning students, as well as some new staff inside of our building. So we've had a great start of the year, and I really appreciate your efforts and hard work as we start the year, but also your patience as we go through some changes happening throughout our district. First off, at our middle school. As you can tell, our middle school still is under a bit of construction. The roof project is still lingering on into the school year, and our transportation um, traffic areas are also being finalized. One thing you'll see in the next coming week is gates to be installed at our middle school to help our traffic flow as we, again, try to create the safest opportunity for students to come and go from our school each and every day. Also, some new things happening throughout our district are new programming. At our middle school, we have a Preparing for College and Careers program for our 7th and 8th grade students, and they've been a recipient of a grant to enhance that program. So there will be more to come throughout the school year as students engage with our new teacher, Mrs. Baxter, in the areas of Preparing for College and Careers. Also, throughout our district, we received a counseling grant that's going to provide greater service to all of our students at each of our buildings. Later this school year, you'll be getting more information from our counselors about that program and the services it's going to offer. Lastly, of new information going on in our district, in the coming weeks, you'll be receiving information from our district regarding calendar options for the 2024-2025 school year. I know we just started the 23-24 school year, but we're already looking forward to the 24-25 calendar. And we want to get your feedback on the best way to develop a calendar to meet your needs as a student, as a family, and as our faculty and staff for our greater community. So be on the lookout for more information regarding our calendar options and what is most important to you as we build a calendar for the 24-25 school year. On this episode, we're going to be bouncing around a couple different areas throughout our community. Our first stop will be at our Bluffton Harrison Elementary School to visit with our parent-teacher organization and what they provide to our students and staff at Bluffton Elementary. We'll also stay there and have a conversation with Mrs. Mosier, our preschool teacher, and Mrs. Linderwell, our elementary principal, about the new experiences available for our preschool students in our experiential preschool classroom focused on farm engagement or our agricultural business. And also information about our, our courtyard playground that our preschool and kindergarten students will be able to use that is brand new to start this school year. Our last stop will be venturing out into the community to see one of our alumni from the class of 1976 as we'll be visiting the Wells County Public Library Ossian Branch to have a conversation with Mrs. Susan Daly. Welcome, I'm here with Mrs. Janelle Freuger and she is the president of our Bluffton Harrison Elementary School Parent Teacher Organization, better known as the BHES PTO. So welcome Mrs. Freuger, I appreciate you being here. Yeah, thanks, it's good to be here. So first off, for those that maybe aren't familiar with our PTO, what is our PTO and, and what do they help with here at our elementary? Um, so our PTO is basically just um, a group of parents and a group of teachers. We have a representative mm -hmm. for each grade and you know our different organizations here that mm -hmm. represent the teacher side and then parents that are here to be a part of everything that's involved. Um, we raise money and we support our teachers and our staff here at the elementary. Mm -hmm. um, we do different things for the teachers. We raise money that is all directly goes back to our students here at Bluffton Elementary through field trips and extra things in the classroom, right. through snacks and games and mm -hmm. all the fun things. We host um, several events throughout the year. We have a big first event coming up just this week, yep. correct? This Thursday night is our back to school family night. Um, we'll have um, a light supper, hot dogs and pop and snacks and chips um, for purchase in the cafeteria and then some bounce houses in the gym. Mm -hmm. So they can come in and they can eat, they can play. Um, the kids can show whomever they bring their classrooms, their lockers, right. all the things that they're excited about as we start this school year. Yeah, that event does serve a, a dual purpose, yeah. um, getting involved with the school. But if you didn't have a chance to come out at registration day or didn't get a chance to come in yet to the building, it's a great opportunity to come in, see your student's classroom, see where they're having fun each and every day. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So besides that event, what are some other kind of the big things that the PTO helps sponsor throughout the school year for the elementary school? Yeah, so... Um, Coming up, some of our events are 
more fundraising events where we try and earn some money to give back to the school mm -hmm. and some of our events are just purely for fun right um, so up most coming up the quickest is our walkathon mm -hmm. will be in October and our book fair I did that backwards a little bit but our <laughs> book fair will be the end of September so the book fair is kind of another dual purpose the mm -hmm. kids get to come in purchase books and then Part of those proceeds go back to the school and then the walkathon is in October um, and that's just a fun day the kids all get a free t-shirt we have um, fabulous businesses in our community that sponsor right. sponsor these t-shirts so every kid gets a t-shirt and they just get to go to the track and uh, Mr. A is our DJ for the day. <laughs> DJ they, Paul's. Yep, they walk and they run and they, they have a great day out the track. So if a parent wants to be involved with the organization, yep. um, there, there's a couple different levels to that. They could just be helpful as a volunteer yep. at any event that we have. Correct. Um, but also they could be actually on the on the PTO board yep. and, and serve. So yep. when do you meet? How does that how does that work? And how yeah. does somebody get involved? So um, you know any any teacher here at the school or administrator of the office, they would all know how to get in contact with me <laughs> if they have any questions or want to become involved. Um, we have a meeting the, starting in September, the first Tuesday of every month okay. at six thirty in the meeting room. Mm -hmm. Is that what it's yes. called? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so we just, they're not real long, there's it's a no pressure, we just talk about what's coming up, mm -hmm. our agenda, kind of, the teachers give a slight report as to, you know, what each grade, what's happening in mm -hmm. that month, and it's just informational, but you can also learn how to become involved. So, um, yeah, you Great. can, we're going to be looking for a couple positions. Um, we've got a couple of us moms that are have fourth graders that are moving out of right. the building, and then also just each event. Yep. You know, it can be an hour, it can be just a short amount of time, but we're always looking for help. Well, it's a great partnership that the PTO has with our elementary school that, like you said earlier, just drives right back into the programming for yeah. our students. And we appreciate that as a district. I know our elementary team really appreciates the service yeah. that our PTO brings. So if you're interested in, in serving in that area, please reach out. I'm sure they'll take more hands to help. And then uh, our leadership group may be moving on here yeah. in a year or so with uh, with new faces to come in to fulfill those roles. So thank you so much for joining us, yeah. Mrs. Froeger, yeah. and uh, we appreciate all you do to okay. help us out. Yeah, we're thankful for all, everything that's done here on a daily basis. Great. Welcome, we're here at our elementary school with our principal, Mrs. Linderwell, and our preschool teacher, Mrs. Mosier, to share a little bit of information about our new upgrades to our preschool programming and our playground equipment. So welcome, thanks so much for being here. Thank you, Dr. Yates. I'm excited to talk to you about our inclusive playground. We have a lot of new items and equipment that were added there to help kids in different ways, not only to get outside and obviously burn off some of that energy, but also to meet some of their sensory needs that they may have um, through movement. We also have um, on our playground a new lamp board. It's a communication device that many of our students have already been running over to and pointing out different words to help them communicate, not just with their teachers, but also with their peers. It's pretty exciting to watch. Yeah, it's great to see students use their voice on the playground, whereas before it was very difficult for them to be able to communicate with their peers and to getting them that opportunity has just been amazing to see. I agree, and it also provides an opportunity for our verbal students to learn alongside of their peers. Great. And the, some of the equipment out there, like you said, is specific to um, accessibility. Uh, one, one big popular area so far has been the spinner um, that's out in the corner of the playground. We're excited for that out there yeah, as well. It is wheelchair accessible. Mm -hmm. It does uh, provide the opportunity for two wheelchairs to be able to be on it as well as for our typical students at the same mm -hmm. time. So those kids have been having a great time on it. And that playground is only for our youngest learners, um, for our kindergarten and preschool students whereas the other students are out at the uh, kind of outside the courtyard playground or traditional playground that you can see as you drive by, correct? Yes, we are at paths to quality level preschool and some of those uh, bring about restrictions and things that we need to follow. Preschool has to have their own recess time, so gives them that opportunity, but also our special education classes can go out there as well and utilize it. So we have the opportunity for kids to play outside at recess with our new playground, but inside the classroom we have some changes as well. So Mrs. Mosher is here to share us a little bit about what's happening in our preschool rooms. So thanks again for joining us and share about the updates that we have for our preschool room. Yeah, we are super excited. We are um, adding in a farm experience classroom, so it's very hands-on. Mm -hmm. When you walk into the room, you will see all the cool wall art they will get to go from the growing area. They will get to go around into like the grocery store. They will get to check out their groceries. We have a barn and a silo that are inside. 
We're super excited for our kiddos to experience this and learn alongside them. Yeah, it's going to be great to see our students get fully immersed into kind of the farm world, as you think, as students walk through that doorway and get to see all those different components. Will they be in there every day, or how does that work for a preschool kid when they're actually in the classroom? So yes, so our, we're going to take turns. We have three different um, preschool classes, so we will take turns and we will rotate every three weeks. So three weeks we will be, uh, one class will be in there and the next three weeks and we'll just go rotate and so we'll basically be doing the seasons on the farm mm -hmm. and rotating through. Great. So they're learning lessons while actively playing yeah. in, in that farm experience and they go back and, and have that traditional learning time in a, in a different classroom as well. Yes. Wonderful. And it's really exciting to see when it, as it's getting nearer to completion that our students will be able to really get in there later on this semester and get the full experience of what they'll have in the preschool farm experience classroom. So thanks so much for sharing information about our preschool rooms as well as our new playground areas. I appreciate your time and, and to share just a little bit of the, all the great things that are happening here at our elementary school. Thank you. Thank you. As part of our alumni spotlight this month, we're visiting with Mrs. Susan Daly, who works for the Wells County Public Library, and she's the Ossian Branch Manager. So thanks a lot for letting us come out and invade you here at your <laughs> office. Um, but we're really excited to highlight some of our alumni in our history for Bluffton High School. So thanks again for letting us come in. And what year were you a class of at Bluffton High School? I was from the class of 1976. It was a bicentennial year, <laughs> so yes. Probably a lot of celebration then for the bicentennial. Right. Um, when you think back to high school, mm -hmm. um, what are some of those big things that you remember that kind of that still are with you today from your time at Bluffton High School? Um, I remember the basketball games and <laughs> frenzy. That was a big deal when I was in school. And in those days, we packed the gym. <laughs> it was what you did every yep. Friday, Saturday night. Um, our class actually, I think, won the sectional. I think wow. back then. But yeah. that was before we had classes, yes, so right. you know, way back in the dark ages. <laughs> and um, my freshman year, we had to walk between Central Junior High mm -hmm. and the high school because there wasn't enough room for us at either place. And when you say the high school, that's our old high school. Old high school. On Oak Street in, in Jersey over there on, on the west side of town, correct? Called P.A. Allen at yes. the time, mm -hmm. though yeah. no one ever called it that. <laughs> so yes, it was that school. And Central, of course, was on Washington. Yeah. Not such great memories of Central School, but I enjoyed my high school great, years. Great, So four years at Bluffton High School. Right. Um, and then from there, you set off into a career. So wh where, where was your, what was your launch pad going to next after, after Bluffton High School? Well, my senior year, I did cadet teaching. Okay. And I had thought I wanted to be a librarian, but when I did my cadet teaching, I decided that's what I wanted to do instead. <laughs> so I went to Ball State University mm -hmm. and got my... Um, elementary education teaching degree. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. In those days though, teaching jobs were very hard to come by. Um, so when I got out, I actually had a nine and a six week teaching job at Lancaster for a maternity leave. Okay. By the time I was finished, I was expecting my first child. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot easier to be a part-time librarian than a part-time teacher. Sure. Yeah. So I went back to the library, which I started when I was 15, as a shelver, we called them pages, <laughs> in the old library. Mm -hmm. um, and then I just kind of went back and stayed. So the only time I have not worked for the Wells County Public Library was those six weeks. And actually, I even worked like Friday nights yeah. during that period. Wow. So I've been on their payroll since <laughs> I was 15. <laughs> and probably seen a lot of change, not only in the library programming, but also in the community with the schools, um, just being a part of, of the community in those areas. So thinking back over your time when you first started out with the library and came back at kind of as a part-time, full-time capacity, what are some of those big moments that, that would have um, shined for you looking back over that history? When I started, we still wrote library card numbers oh, wow. on the card, and we had a little dater at the end of the pencil, <laughs> and you stamped it, and that's how when people knew. Yeah. And I've been going back through kind of my history at the library. Then we went to an automated system where you had a metal plate on your card, mm. and you put it in this little machine, and it went kachunka. <laughs> and stamped your date due and your library card number. Wow. Then we went to computerized mm -hmm. and we've gone through, I think, 
three or four iterations of a computerized wow. system. It is just a lot of change to manage. A lot of change to manage. <laughs> New expertise to gain. Um, when, when you think about high school kids today, um, and I know you're, you're a grandparent of some high school kids as right. well, what would be some good advice that you would probably give um, to a high school kid, or maybe even to yourself way back when, if you could give yourself some advice as well, um, going back into your mindset of being a high schooler? Um, I would say take advantage of some of the extra things that you get to do, because I was a yearbook editor um, when I was in high school, and that's not really something you ever get to do again. Yeah. I was in some plays, mm -hmm. um, not very good, but again, it was a great <laughs> experience. Choir, I don't have a great voice, but that was something. And then it gives you kind of a niche sure. and a group of people, but I started, you know, at Bluffton when I was a a kindergartner. <laughs> so I, you know, I had kids that yeah. I had known all the sure. way through. Yep. So, and when I was there, it was K to six at Eastside <laughs> and then seven to nine at the middle school, right. well, junior high. Yep. And right. then 10 to 12 at the high school. So yeah, enjoy the time, uh, make friends, but have a lot of fun. Yeah, great. And I know at our high school now, kids have a lot of opportunities to get engaged in different ways. Um, and hopefully they have some fun while they're, while they're doing that too. But they're able to, to last, uh, to build some lasting memories. Um, so hopefully years, years down the road, they can, they can be at moments to be able to recall back some great moments that, that yeah. you've even thought of here today. So I, I really appreciate you opening up your door to us and just letting us put a little spotlight on uh, some of our previous alumni. Anything else you'd want to share um, as, a, as a former Tiger? My parents were Tigers. They graduated from Bluffton. And now I have three grandchildren mm -hmm. who are Bluffton, so it's a multi-generational yep. thing. And when my parents passed, we did set up a scholarship in their right. name. Yep. Because my mom worked at the Bluffton schools for more yep. than 50 years. Mm -hmm. She started, left, graduated, and the next Monday started as a secretary. <laughs> and my dad drove bus, and he yep. loved driving the yep. football team. Yep. So. Yeah, so I have lots of good Bluffton memories. Great people giving great service over many years. Yes. And just like yourself here with the uh, Wells County Public Library as well. So we're, we're proud to have you in our ranks as, a, uh, as an alumni, and we wish you the very best um, for the rest of your time. So okay. thank you so much. It's always great to connect with another one of our alumni here for Bluffton High School and Bluffton Harrison Metropolitan School District. As you can tell, Mrs. Daly has had a great career in our community serving at the Wells County Public Library, and we wish her the very best. Upcoming next month, our Bluffton High School Bingo Brigade will be hosting the Banks of the Wabash on September 9th. So if you're in the area and available, we'd encourage you to come and visit and see the wonderful bands that will be coming to Bluffton High School for the Banks of the Wabash competition. Lastly, just as a bit of information ahead of the upcoming November election, Bluffton Harrison Metropolitan School District will be offering a safety referendum on the election ballot. We will be providing the opportunity for the district to increase our tax levy to support safety for the school district in two primary areas. One, providing a school resource officer at each of our three buildings, and two, providing a mental health counselor to be able to service all of our students throughout our district. For more information about the upcoming safety referendum ballot, you can check out our website or feel free to contact the school for additional information. As always, thanks for joining us for this month's episode of the Roar Report and Go Tigers! <laughs>